Hey everybody, it's Kevin McCarthy here. And Lauren Veneziani McCarthy. And this is and our, Oscar. Yeah, this is our dog Oscar. <laughs> um, so this, this is our second movie review podcast that we're doing together as a married couple. Uh, we wanted to introduce you to our dog. Oscar, who's named after the Academy Award, obviously. Yeah, and we're, this, this is our movie area. Uh, last week we reviewed Black Panther, as you saw on our channel. If you didn't, you can just search for it on our YouTube channel here, Fox 5 DC. Um, but yeah, our dog Oscar, ever since I met Lauren in 2012, she rescued him. Hi, buddy. Yeah, I rescued him. Um, we've had him for about... I don't even know how long, seven, seven years? Yeah, oh, and he's named after the Academy Awards. Yeah. And, and he's the best. <laughs> and, and he loves Kevin. Yep, he's our, he's our best boy. And uh, <laughs> he is covering up our shirts right now, which we wanted to show off. Well, oh, explain yes. Explain what these are. Oh, uh, well, we were at Disney World uh, the other day, and Kevin insisted that we get these. Obviously, the famous... <laughs> Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, right? Yeah. I, Leia, when Leia says, I love you to Han, and he goes, I know, I which know. was an improvised line. And, and we, initially, we were in Disney, and by the way, we are going to review Annihilation this week and uh, Game, uh, Night. Game Night. But we were in Disney World uh, visiting, uh, and uh, I saw these shirts, and initially, I just wanted to get a photo of us wearing these shirts because they were so cool. But then I felt bad that we put them on in the store. So we, I was like, we have enough t-shirts. Once I put it on, I was like, okay, we're gonna We had them. to buy them and, and now we're <laughs> utilizing them here. Um, but yeah, so this is our uh, room as we mentioned. And uh, Black Panther, by the way, before we get to the new reviews this week, we wanted to mention the box office. Yes. And um, I mean, you were reviewing it in Baltimore on Saturday, talking about the numbers possibly being at around 200 million, which was the initial thought process. I mean, the, the numbers for this movie changed so much over the uh, first time the projections came out. They were at 100 million, 120 million, uh, but the total now for the four-day week, it was 241.9 million, oh, which is insane. And uh, the, it's the biggest February opening of all time, I yeah, think. Yeah, it beat yeah. Deadpool. Deadpool had that record, I believe, uh, at 152 million, I, I want to say is the exact number. And it's number. also cool to see other celebrities and actors in, you know, Marvel Universe, not just Marvel Universe, tweet the support about Black yeah. Panther, Ryan Reynolds, Chris Hemsworth, so many other actors in Hollywood um, showing their support for Black Panther. Everybody's obsessed with it. And it's just really cool to see other actors tweet about movies because I feel like it doesn't happen too, too much. Yeah, this seemed like this seemed like it was bigger than a film. This was like a moment. This was like a mm -hmm. historical time uh, to see everybody kind of come together and embrace this massive movie. Oprah was tweeting about it. Mm -hmm. uh, people who weren't even involved in the film were talking about the movie. As my wife mentioned, Ryan Reynolds was tweeting about it. Uh, it was just a big deal. I and mean, Everyone was going to the theaters. It was cool to have people in the cinema seeing it's a massive the theater, movie. I mean, we just saw Game Night tonight at the movie theater, and I mean, it's it's still, the theater is packed. I yeah. feel like still people are going to be seeing Black Panther for the next couple weekends. Yeah, and it was an incredible film, as we mentioned. Uh, Ryan Coogler did an amazing job with it. It just still blows my mind that a 31-year-old filmmaker who had already made Fruitvale Station and Creed for relatively lower budgets compared to Black Panther, and then this one becomes I one of the biggest openings ever. Yeah, we've been listening to the Kendrick soundtrack. Oh my God, yeah. so good. It's really good. So I, <laughs> I gave Panther a 4.5 out of 5. I did too, only because, I mean, honestly, I, like, I did thinking about it now, and sometimes you do change your reviews after you think about it. Like, I get, I do get a four and a half out of five only because I had some problems with the CGI, but I honestly enjoyed it so much more. I mean, besides Deadpool in the Marvel universe, I enjoyed it so much more than like some recent of the Marvel films. Yeah. I just, it's just so fun. Yeah, it's not my top five Marvel Cinematic Universe films. It's my number six uh, behind Civil War, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Avengers One, Guardians One, and Iron Man One, but right behind those, I need to Black watch Panther. them all again. I know our buddy Jake Hamilton is rewatching all of the Marvel films before Infinity Wars, and I, if I, I I'm gonna try and do the same because I feel like I don't remember, like I, I, I can't go and rank them right now. Only the recent ones that I've seen, I can like say things about. Cause yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen like the Iron Man movies. Yeah, I rewatched Civil War this weekend. We watched the recent, rewatched that a couple times. Yeah. Awesome, uh, mm -hmm. Iron Man One. One is so much fun but yeah let's get to the new movies yes. this week uh annihilation and uh game night yes annihilation so this is from director alex garland who did one of my favorite movies of the last five years ex machina 
with Oscar Isaac and Alicia Vikander, one of my favorite actresses working today. And Annihilation stars Natalie Portman and has a great female cast. Oscar Isaac is also back in the film. And we don't want to say too, too much about the plot because we don't want to give every, give anything away. But what you can see from the trailers is that Natalie Portman is this John Hopkins professor. She's a very smart biologist and scientist and when her husband Oscar Isaac something happens to him he gets kind of stuck in the shimmer um she kind of needs to she kind of goes to the place where he was last seen and goes into the shimmer to figure out what is going on and obviously it's some sort of alien activity yeah is that a good way of describing yeah it? it's hard to explain <laughs> it it really is i, I honestly have been having a, a lot of trouble figuring out how to explain this to people because the movie is all about this question of what what the shimmer is what's inside the shimmer why what's why is what's happening there happening mm -hmm. um and oscar Isaac's character does return from the shimmer as we see in the beginning of the film um he's somehow been affected physically by what he experienced there uh, and now natalie portman's character essentially goes into the shimmer to try and figure out how she can help her husband on the outside um something that's happening within the shimmer it's mutating creatures it's mutating landscapes um weird things are happening but we don't really know what it is right um, which is kind of the big question the trailers kind of lead you to be to believe what that question might be uh no one really knows uh and that becomes kind of the big question jennifer jason lee jennifer rodriguez as you mentioned yeah, the, the female character the female cast is amazing i mean natalie portman jennifer jason lee gina rodriguez tessa thompson from thor ragnarok um so many great female strong female characters in here that all go in as a team and I will say, Annihilation, compared to Ex Machina, very scary. I, I was very surprised. It's it's more of a sci-fi thriller, whereas Ex Machina, I mean, had some freaky ele ele uh, elements to it. But this was kind of definitely horror at times. And I mean, it's definitely a hard R rating as as well. Yeah, I mean, Alice Garland's one of the, my favorite filmmakers working today. Ex Machina blew my mind. Um, I don't think this is on the level of Ex Machina. I think the big problem with this film that I have is that I loved every minute of it up until the ending. And I'm not gonna, we're not going to spoil anything here, but to me, uh, one of the big things about movies is I love an open-ended uh, ending. I mean, you look at films like Inception where the totem's spinning, it's your decision whether or not that it's a dream or not. Um, I'm okay with directors leaving you with a question that you need to think about and come to your own uh, decision on. The problem with the ending of Annihilation is I felt like the question that I'm supposed to be asking myself wasn't clear. Well, and it wasn't, it, it just wasn't, it doesn't feel as interesting as, I mean, because yeah, this is totally a movie where you're going to have multiple theories coming out about what happened. Of course, this is based off of a novel. It is, there's three novels here. I guess depending on how well this does at the box office and the success, they'll see if they make the other two. But I do think that it does work as a standalone film as well if they don't make the other two novels. I haven't read the books. Not sure how similar it is to the books. I really enjoyed the movie throughout and I really got... I was very intrigued with the story. I thought Natalie Portman was great um, and everybody else was great. Not a bad performance in the movie. It's just at the very end, it's like, I, I just, I, I don't think I was as mind blown as maybe other people might have been or as yeah. I wanted to be, but it's still, I, I always appreciate a movie where there is an open ended ending. I just don't know if it's, I don't know if it was like the right way to, I don't know. Yeah, to, to me, I mean, that, that's kind of, this is the way, way we were discussing it last night on the way home in the car is that we, we don't, wanted more I don't really know maybe. how to feel about it. And I also found myself just not fully grasping what I'm supposed to be thinking at the end of the movie. So you have all this build up, which is amazing. You're intrigued, you're into the whole thing. You're wondering what's going to happen. And then once I guess some sort of type of reveal has occurred, um, it just didn't wow me. So it's weird because I loved 99.9% .9 of the film uh, and it, it, it had me on the edge of my seat. I was mm -hmm. locked in. I was like going, I was like, couldn't wait to find out what was going to happen. And then it just kind of just 
Yeah. But I do appreciate the creativity that Alex Garland brings to his movies. And, you know, this is a Paramount Pictures release. This is a big release. And it's not going to be a movie for mainstream audiences. I think a lot of moviegoers are going to walk away. Even, even like maybe a lot of them did with Ex Machina being like, oh, I don't like that because people don't necessarily want to, a lot of people don't want to have more of a, we like to call like a bow tie ending. Um, and you're not going to get that with this one. But I do think the cinematography was beautiful. The performances were great. I do think it is a solid feature film for Alex Garland following Ex Machina. Um, I just don't think that I, I definitely didn't love it as ex, as much as Ex Machina. That was my number one film. Yeah, I mean, year. it's a solid film for sure. I mean, Natalie Portman does a great job, as as we mentioned. The performances are amazing. Script is decent. Uh, I didn't, I saw, thought some of the dialogue was a bit. Some of the dialogue was, was bit, cheesy at times. Yeah, they tried to make it a bit comedic, and I thought the tone didn't shift right. Um, but it's interesting because I, I, I do think, I do love that filmmakers are challenging audiences. A yes, film like Dunkirk I, I makes, like may, may, makes the audiences work. Uh, to enjoy a movie or something like a Phantom Thread or things that make you kind of uh, have to work with the movie, and I'm mm -hmm. totally in into that. And I think a lot of audiences are into that. I just think that once once a movie ends and there's nothing to to, I guess in my opinion, to chew on. Uh, and if there is things to chew on, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be chewing on because it doesn't. It, I, I haven't really come to a conclusion of what the question of this film is. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, like this is a movie we're gonna buy on Blu-ray at our Blu-ray collection. It's gonna be look amazing in Blu-ray HD 4K. The visuals are amazing. I'd love to see it again, and and you know, it could be a movie after I see it again. I might have more to think about it, but I do think it's a solid film following Ex Machina for Alex Garland. So I'm giving it a four out of five. Yeah. One thing I want to mention, the thing that intrigued me the most about it was the cinematography. Um, just the use of light in the film the uh, one of the big the elements too. yeah one of the big themes in the movie is reflection and refraction and, and 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 the way light moves through things and that's kind of the whole idea of how the shimmer works uh very rainbow-esque type colors almost like a gasoline bubble uh is how i thought about it when i was watching <laughs> it um but it is like very <laughs> freaky when you're watching it there are mm -hmm. scenes that will scare you beyond belief yes um there's a there's a use of a death screen that really scared me very scary um, but yeah i gave it a four out of five as well i just i i i I've loved a lot of it but i was very underwhelmed in the ending so it's a tough movie to review because i enjoyed 99.9 percent .9 of it it's really just the ending that i didn't feel uh i didn't feel the build-up was worth what the reveal was, in my opinion. So right. it's a four out of five. Uh, it had the ending blo uh, been a little bit more, uh, ex maybe a little more uh, questionary in my mind, give me a better question to ask and talk about and think about more, I would have given it a higher rating. Mm -hmm. Yes, four out of five for Annihilation. Like I said, we don't always agree. We did for Black Panther, but... And, and for this one as well, but I promise me, we won't agree in the future always. <laughs> right. No, it, we generally, we we do have very similar tastes, which is why we're together. Yeah. We, we, you know, we, we met over the movie Drive, and obviously you can see our collection here. We, you can't see our posters. We got Breaking Bad everywhere. Let's yeah. get to Game Night. Yes, which we just saw. Yeah, and this is from the directors of that horrible Vacation remake, which I uh, I was very... I did not like that film whatsoever, but these, but these directors also wrote Spider-Man Homecoming, so that... It's interesting where I was at with 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 these filmmakers because I was I wondering what's horrible vacation. The movie's called Vacation. Um, the, it's, it's, oh, that yeah. vacation movie that yeah. was so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I th okay, but, it could, but isn't it? Or did they do Horrible Bosses as well? Or no? I don't was think it the same so. producers? I don't I know. Thought if it's there the was same a, producer, some no, connection no. with Horrible Bosses because of J Jason Bateman. But okay, yeah, that vacation movie was really bad. Yeah, vacation was really okay. really bad. Yeah. Um, but this movie basically deals with a group of friends who are hosting a game night once a week or so, and it's a frequent game night, and this one particular night turns into a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really cool, like especially uh, if you're a film fan, lots of film references in the movie. So many film references. Yeah, Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams are the married couple, um, and they host the game nights. Jesse Plemons is their like strange next-door neighbor who always wants to get in all the game night. Um, yeah, our, Jesse uh, Plemons yeah, is so good. So in good in it. Plemons um, is like my favorite part of that movie, and, that we, and we all know him as Todd from Breaking Bad. Yeah, he looks very. He looks exactly like Matt Damon. I, I, in Fargo season two, he was good too. He looks exactly like Matt Damon. Like it freaks me out. Oh, and Kyle Kyle Chandler's in mm -hmm. it, and also our buddy Lamorne Morris from uh, from New Girls yeah. in it as well. It's a great cast, and yeah. and, and Kylie Bunbury from uh, the show Pitch, which was mm -hmm. on Fox. She's really good in it too. Yeah, no, it's really fun, and like Kevin said, I love the use of the movie references literally throughout they did 
Terminator 2, Django Unchained, Taken, Pulp Fiction, literally throughout the movie, which was really, really fun. I thought that Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams had really good chemistry. Um, there was kind of a lot of like surprises going throughout the film that we didn't necessarily expect coming. I thought that it could have just been like a like a goofy, you know, maybe raunchy comedy, but I was I thought it's it was a, a, it was smartly done and it was more original than. Um, you know what it could be. I was pleasantly surprised it's with it. Really well shot. Like pay attention. There's some really cool moments where there's they use the uh, the the shot the uh, opening shot of a sequence. Uh, what's, what's the name of that shot? I can't remember the name, uh, name of the shot. Establishing shot of yeah. the scene uh, to make it look like a video game board, but like then a they'll board game. and then the camera will come into the shot as if things were really moving. So if a car is parking in a parking space, it'll be out wide, and you'll see this video game esque type game board and then we'll go into it and then the car will park and actors will get out of it. I have no idea how he did It how was really it. cool how they how they did the cinematography and how they shot it to make it look like And the Warner Bros. logo game. was like a video game piece. Yeah, it was really it was really fun. I mean I, I liked it a lot. I think that um I like I said I was pleasantly surprised for, for it and I think um it was a it was a fun comedy. I, yeah. I laughed a lot. Yeah it surprised <laughs> me. I mean I, again it's not something I'm gonna like think is one of the greatest movies ever made but I I had a really good time with it. Uh, lots of references, again, to movies. It just kind of reminded me of how our friends talk and how we talk to each other about yes. referencing movies. And it honestly did make me want to host a game night. Yeah, it seems fun. <laughs> honestly, the charades and Django. 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 But actually, there's a Django there Unchained reference. There's a Django reference. Unchained reference there's in it, which is really funny. There's literally a joke that, uh, that's made in the movie, and I'm also looking at a Django Unchained poster across the hall here. So, but yeah, they played Jenga in one scene. And then also, go. definitely, if you want to, if you do go see it, stay through the, just like the end credit sequence. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of surrounds Jesse Plemons' character, which is which is really fun, and we, we laughed a lot. I give it like a three and a half out of five. I give it a four. I a liked four it. four out of five, liked, yeah. yeah. It was, honestly, it was, it was really fun. We yeah. had a lot of fun with I it. I liked it. And it's only an hour 40 minutes it's nice to go to like you know a shorter movie and not sit in the theater for two two and a half yeah. hours sometimes and it's tough sitting here talking about annihilation by the way going back to the first review we did because i don't fully have my thoughts locked down yet because i want to watch it one more time so i do want to make sure that i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to that movie at some point in this video type of podcast uh, as we get down the line because i want to watch it again because there's something that keeps you totally need to think about we sat we sat in the theater for a long time thinking about it. There's something that's bothering me about the movie. It deals with a <laughs> it deals with a water cup of water and a reflection. So if anyone's watching this and you see Annihilation, there's two shots to pay attention to. There's a shot towards the beginning where I, Oscar Isaac and Natalie Portman are at a table together. They they're both of their hands are seen through a glass of water. Then towards the end of the film, there is another type of water shot. And I think that I think that might be the explanation for the entire movie. And I don't know if if I'm onto something or if I'm looking I at it wrong. I think it is for sure because there's some kind of reflection they refraction did there. Those two shots yeah. on purpose. So those are what the shots I need to pay attention to when I go back. And as I sit here right now, I don't even know what they mean. So it's not I'm not spoiling anything, but just as as a viewer, try paying attention to those shots because looking back on it now, I wish I would have maybe looked mm -hmm. at them a little differently and seen how the reflections and refractions were done. So I'm, I'm interested to see it again. So. Yeah, we'll definitely see it again. We, we, we like movies where we need to see it again and, and think a lot. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's a couple, I mean, there's a lot of different movies to see in theaters this weekend. All, all of them are different. Black Panther, if you still have, if you haven't seen Black Panther yet, definitely see that because I think that's the best movie playing right now. Annihilation, if you're interested in a sci-fi thriller that's going to make you think. And Game Night, if you just want to go like on a fun date night, it, I think it would be really fun. Yeah, all right, so we'll, we'll be back next week with um, Red, Sparrow. Red Sparrow, which is the Jennifer Lawrence, Francis Lawrence, Joel Edgerton movie. Yes. Uh, and those are the reviews for this week. Uh, leave us comments below. Let us know. We're still trying to figure out a name for this video podcast. Again, we're a married couple uh, who <laughs> met in 2012. We got married. We uh, are. We love movies. We're both film critics. Lauren's a film critic in Baltimore. I'm a film critic in DC for Fox Five DC. Uh, and you can read Lauren's reviews at DCFilmGirl.com. Yes. All right. We'll, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank Talk you so much for Jennifer watching. Talk about Jennifer next week. Yay. Bye. <laughs>